Okay, um, I think we can start now. Okay, I'm just gonna share my screen. See my screen. Okay, great stuff. Um, okay, guys, so today we are going to talk about two things. Uh, the first thing being uh, this thing here being PyTest. Uh, that's our first point of discussion. And then uh, we'll also talk about uh, PyTest as well. Um, so I think I was, I was going through the, the documentation for, for both PyTest and PyTest. I think for PyTest, uh, we can use um, the official documentation uh, to uh, understand it and test it out. Uh, but maybe, uh, first of all, we've been using a unit test uh, so far, right, uh, which comes prepackaged with uh, your Python um, interpreter. So PyTest is an alternative uh, to unit test. Um, it, it promises um, easier uh, sort of testing statements uh, like this one. So if you, maybe let me just show you by example. Uh, okay. So with unit test, the way we do our assets is, you see here, we have asset true, asset false. So the asset statements are very, very explanatory, right? You know exactly uh, what you are asserting for, asset equal, etc. Uh, the PyTest ideology is rather different. Uh, they say you don't need this, you know, these are uh, these extra terms here. So you actually only have one asset, right? You have asset and then the rest uh, of this, for example, would be catered for uh, using uh, your normal Python. Uh, for example, here, you will see that uh, well, they're testing this uh, ink uh, function for increment, and this is what they're doing. So equals is put here, right? So they're actually using an, a, a normal Python expression to test for equals, whereas with unit test, they are putting it like this. So it's already been implemented. So you, equality is implemented in unit test, but in Py, PyTest, it's not implemented. Uh, so that's just one example. Uh, so even, you know, uh, the truthiness or falseness, it's already implemented in unit test, uh, but in PyTest, you know, it's not implemented. You have to, you know, use your own expression to, um, to compute that, right? So it really depends on you. Um, you know, if, if you trust yourself that you won't make mistakes, you can use this format. Uh, but if you think that you can make mistakes, then you can you can use this format. Uh, but it does assist in making it easy, right? So that you don't have to remember uh, what the asset uh, statement actually is uh, that you need to use, right? So that's that's the main difference between unit test and pytest. Uh, pytest you have to install, uh, as you can see here. You know you have to do a pip install. 
Uh, but with us, because you are using Conda, so PyTest will come installed uh, in Conda. Uh, but if it's not installed in your environment, then you can install it uh, using PIP. Uh, probably there's even a Conda way of installing uh, PyTest. Uh, unit test, uh, as you can see here, it's being explained in the uh, Python uh, documentation. So it is part of the uh, Python interpreter. So you don't have to install anything when you use uh, unit test. Uh, but yeah, so we've, we've been using unit test so far, uh, but this is just an opportunity for you to take a look at another, uh, you know, test uh, framework or test runner, right? So, um, um, you know, it, it would be nice if, actually this, these examples are quite simple. Uh, it would be nice if, you know, you guys can, can code with me. Uh, so when you have issues, uh, we can quickly debug. Uh, I'm hoping that, you know, maybe the first uh, 30 minutes of, of this talk, we can just look at PyTest and then the next uh, 30 minutes we can look at, at PyTel, right? So if you can quickly, uh, you know, code with me, it's really simple, right? You don't actually, you don't even have to, uh, you know, type this up. You can just copy and paste, right? Uh, so what I will do, so I have a, a small project here, already, you know, uh, called Algorand. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new one. Uh, oops, not, no. That's the wrong one. I wanna create it within here, I think, instead of having two different windows open. Uh, okay. Let's see, I think. Yeah, new folder, but I want it, so I'm just going to say call it PyTest Simples. I don't want it to be part of algorithm, I want it to be its own. Okay, so look at this. The easiest way to do that is here. So, PyTest Simples. And I think I can edit that folder to workspace. Okay. Uh, please code with me if you can. Um, and ask questions if, if you need to. Um, okay. So, okay. So, right here, we want to add this. Just add this. Okay, cool. So we have two. Yeah, okay, never mind. Okay, so it's actually refreshed, so I don't have to add this. Let's remove that. So we have this. Um, so just create this. Just create this file. Okay, you can just do it this quickly. Uh, just create a new file. We call it test sample. We put in this code here. Yeah. If you don't understand, please uh, ask. Uh, let's put in this code here. So you'll see that um, usually with a uh, unit test, what we would do is we'd actually have uh, like a would have like a source folder, and we'd have a test or test folder, right? Where in your your test files would be in in the one directory and your source files would be in the other, you can also do it here uh, with with PyTest, uh, but this is just uh, a simplified uh, implementation, right? Uh, probably not not good enough production. You may want to uh, reflect the first. You may want to put this is your implementation code and this is your test code, right? Uh, you may want to split them into source and test, but for now, uh, we just want to test out how PyTest actually works. So there's no need for that, but uh, for best practice, you may want to uh, split out uh, those different, um, uh, uh, you know, code um, uh, code blocks, right? Uh, but here it, it, it's it's easy because you don't have to import anything. You don't have to do with those kinds of things. Uh, you can just uh, implement it simply like this, right? Uh, so to lessen complexity, right? 
So as you can see, so we're here. Uh, we're going to pay test samples. Here we have uh, the test uh, sample, which is well, there's one test, right? If you just type by test on there, okay, you'll see that it actually returns a failure, right? So fail test, uh, I set four equals five, right? So it failed because four is not equal to five, right? Um, and with PyTest, you'll see that here it will show you all the tests uh, that were run. Uh, so collected one test, so it only found one test. And here you'll see that, okay, it's found all the tests. Right, it says hundred percent. Right, so if you have if you had two tests, uh, as you see uh, soon enough, then you have fifty percent for the one test and hundred percent uh, for the other test. And then it, sh it shows it's quite detailed. It shows you, you know, the the the, the test, uh, the test itself, and what asset uh, you you uh, you typed in, and then you know, the the, the when this is evaluated, what you get. Uh, and yeah, so this is what they're saying. So you think uh, three, increment three by one is equal to four, but we're testing that it's equal to five, right? This is a very uh, simple uh, dummy uh, example, but yeah, it, it, it helps um, sort of you understand how uh, PyTest actually work. So the assertion error, and then this is the problem. Uh, so maybe just um, for, for completeness, right? If we change that, right? We change that, and we run our test again, right? You see, it passes. Right? No errors. It doesn't even tell you all these details, right? So you can actually do that. So it's very simple. Um, yeah. Um, but yeah, the other thing that you may want to do is okay, so that's just for one test, right? For one test, which you know is really uh, in the top level directory, right? But actually, uh, PyTest actually looks for all the tests in your directory, even in the sub directories. Um, yeah, so maybe if I could just do this and put it there, right? And then run it again, right? You see that it still runs, right? So it doesn't matter where. In your uh, you know folder, your your test is, but you will find it. Uh, the only thing that is needed is that you must prefix your test name with test, uh, you know uh, underscore whatever the name you want to call it, right? Uh, or you give it a suffix. Uh, so if we go into that. The minus C test into simple the pi right. And then we try that this again. Okay, so it tells you that actually you didn't find any tests, right? Because you didn't need this test uh, file correctly. Um, I see there's a question here. Yes, sure. So I can share the links. So this is the one. Okay, and then there will be this one as well. That we look at uh, as long as we have time. Okay, so that's what it cares about. So you see that because you didn't name this correctly, uh, but even though there's test there, right? So there's, uh, there's test there, but because you you file your file name is incorrect, it doesn't find it, right? So let's do this. So if we name it. Change sample to sample test. Okay, uh, this ideally should should work, right? Because there's, you see, and then it does work, right? Uh, whether whether you start with the test name or you end with it, as long as you have an underscore test or test underscore, PyTest will find it wherever it is in your directory, and then you you get whether. Uh, it's a failing test or a passing test. Uh, so this one is a very simple example. It's a very simple example where you're just incrementing uh, a variable, right? Um, the, and, and as you can see, it's not 
it's just the uh, it's purely functional the are no classes um it's not even modular right um but it's just the, the sample uh, you can improve on it uh, this is just to show you uh, what PyTest can do and, and how simple it, it, it actually is. It is simple, um, but it may not be, um, you know, uh, as, maybe as Pythonic, right? Like the, the assets themselves don't really tell you anything, right? Because uh, what you want to do actually, even with test names, you want to make sure that the test name is explanatory, right? And this is, this is not just for PyTest, it applies for any a kind of testing environment where you say, um, you know, test. Yeah, you could even say test that, uh, you know, incrementing three by one is not equal to five, right? And and you get your, your answer. Uh, or, yeah, so basically you get your answer. And you can change this expression. Um, see if you can just change this expression. You know, say not equal to and see what we get. We get a fail. Right, because in five is equal to five, right? So here, after your asset in PyTest, you can put in any uh, Python expression, basically, and you should be fine. Uh, yeah, so that's one simple example. Uh, yeah, not leaving out any information here. Okay, so the other uh, example, so that I did say, if you know. If you're using your code environment, uh, like M here, right, I mean base, right, then PyTest should already be uh, installed. But if um, if you are not, then you might wanna install it. Uh, so this will not do anything um, because the requirement has already been satisfied. So I already have PyTest installed. So that won't do anything, right? Um, yeah, you can check. Version you have, uh, and this is the version I have. Okay, so that's fine. Um, so this is a same same example as we had here, right? So same example uh, with a different uh, function name, right? Really the same example. Um, but the other thing is, um, yeah. So if you they are PyTest does come with, uh, you know, certain, uh, you know, functions in it. Uh, you know, one of those functions is raises. So I'm not sure if you can see the full list of that, because that would be really great. Uh, first guy. Right, so here they're showing you from, if you import PyTest here, you can, you know, test for uh, exceptions, right? Uh, of you know failure uh, messages, right? Uh, so, okay, so API reference. Just see what else is there. Okay, yeah, great. So these are the different functions that you can invoke uh, from PyTest: a prox, fail, skip, import, uh, importer skip, uh, x fail, exit, main, param, raises, difficult call, register asset, warns, freezing case, right? And you can go inside there to see uh, what each of them um, exactly does, right? Uh, but for you know, for us here, we we'll just you know test with this raises uh, and see what it does. Um, so we're just say, saying, so if you're expecting an error, right? You're saying that you want to make sure that when that error occurs, then uh, you know you. Uh, it's it's being it's whether it's being thrown or whether it's being caught. In this in this case, it's being erased, which is means it's being thrown. Okay. So even here, we'll just do it simply by copying this code snippet, and then we create another file. We'll just still create it in here. It's called. Okay, what happened there? I just rename this. Oh, okay, it's fine. It's fine. So, that. so test says exit pipe. And we'll copy this. All right. So 
let's see here. Okay. Uh, see test. Okay, we are two files. Uh, shouldn't it be three? Test and boot. Anyway, uh, well, so yeah, okay, but it doesn't really matter. Um, okay, so we have this one, which is new, that we want to test out. We'll just type test, I test, and both tests have run, see, 50% for half of the tests, and then the uh, 100%, other 50% for the other test. So both tests have run successfully. Uh, so we did raise this um, uh, system uh, exit. If we do that, if we don't raise it, what do we get? We get a failure, right? So it does work, right? It works fine. It didn't raise, it works fine. Um, the other thing that you could do, uh, you could pass a flag. So as you can see here, it's really verbose, right? Uh, but if you say quiet, then, okay, okay what's going on? Well, I guess uh, maybe it's only when you, when there's no failure. Uh, so let's see. Do that, then really like, it doesn't output too much information. But when there's a failure, it still does, right? It outputs all the information uh, to do with that error. Um, and uh, as you can see here, same as with unit test, right? If you remember, uh, if you remember with unit test, we would say, uh, okay, we didn't say this, we actually call it as a Python module. Uh, and then we say test, and then test that, right? We'll do that. Uh, well, we probably won't make because now uh, the structure is not unit test, but I'm just going to show you that um, you can actually specify a, a directory as well, or a, a directory and a file. If you, because you have sometimes you have hundreds of tests, you don't want to run them all, you're just interested in a particular one uh, because you're in dev mode. So you may you know want to specify a particular uh, test or uh, you may want to, to do this by test and then you say test uh, or pi. So it is just using rejects. So all tests that follow this structure, right? Then those are the ones that need to be run. If you are using the other uh, way of, of writing, if you do that, then it will find, okay. Uh, that's weird. Okay, let's see. If you do that, I test, do that. No match is hard. Okay, so probably for this, you need to specify that. Okay, yeah. You have to specify the subdirectory when you when you do that. Right. But yeah, you can you can do a lot of things here, sort of similar. So there is there is some flexibility, sort of similar to to unit test. Right. You can specify those those files. Um, okay. Uh, okay. So that's mostly it. Uh, but at the same time, right. So I think this will be the last one that we test. Uh, with classes, uh, quite similar, right? Uh, but you can see here, like I was saying, uh, with unit test, uh, there are a lot of uh, asset statements which are very specific to what you're doing. Um, yeah, I don't know where, there should be a complete list of the assets, uh, some API somewhere, uh, but anyway, yeah, so here with unit test, what you would be doing, you would actually specify, so it would be, you know, uh, asset in as as a, an actual asset instead of you typing it out like this as in, in, in Python, right? Same here, it has attribute. Um, I'm not sure what in unit test it would be, uh, but here this is just, a, you know, a, a, a Python function that checks that, 
you know, X has this attribute called check and it will return uh, a failure or a pass. Right? Um, not sure whether there are any questions so far. Uh, guys, any questions, anything? With, uh, in terms of what we've done up until this point? It's, it's clear, right? It's, it's quite easy. Is anyone that I see? There's 18 people here, 18 others. Oh, okay. Uh, Michael, okay. Okay, since so Michael says I'm moving a bit fast, um, I'll just, I don't know, slow down a little bit. Um, yeah, give you, is there anyone, um, maybe can you guys uh, type in the chat if, if you're able to implement, uh, you know, uh, these examples that I've given you uh, in those links? Okay, can I send the links again? So some people really love PyTest. I think it's it's getting it's getting much wider adoption uh, in the industry. Um, yeah, and there are also diehard people who are still using unit test. Um, so it's good to know both uh, because if you find a, t t a code base somewhere, uh, whether it's you know the tests are implemented in unit test or PyTest, it's good for you to be able to understand what's going on there. Okay, thanks for that, Daisy. Okay, Rafa hasn't tried to implement it. Um, okay. Uh, maybe in the interest of time, I'm not sure if I should move to the next. Uh, yeah, maybe. So it's just um, like creating a, a, a five Python file, just, you know, name it test sample.py and run PyTest. That's all you have to do. Uh, forget about, you know, you know, the separate directories, whatever. I was just doing a demonstration. Uh, just create your file and, you know, mostly with this one, the simple, the simple one, which is quite simple. It's not even using any uh, methods from the PyTest module. It's just, you know, it's using this asset. That's all. I think it, it, it comes uh, bundled in, in Python. So it's not even in a PyTest, um, <clears throat> you know, function or uh, keyword. It's just a Python keyword, which, which you can use to do uh, to run tests. Yeah, uh, thanks, thanks, Samuel. Um, yeah, you don't, you don't, well, if you are writing, uh, like, a, if you are working on a big code base, you need them. Uh, for a small code base, maybe not. Uh, but with a big code base, you you want to separate your, uh, your test code from, from your implementation code. Uh, so you can find things. Imagine having one directory with hundreds of files. You never find anything. Right. And it actually makes it easy uh, when you are running, you know, things like this, right? You can actually specify a particular direction, right? But if they're everywhere, then, you know, it's kind of hard. Oh, this one, I was just, uh, where is it? This one, I was just, so, so this one, this is the actual test. Here I was just saying that, you know, basically pass is used a lot in Python uh, when you define a function, but you don't want to implement it yet, right? You are just saying pass. Because if you don't, if you have a function like this and you don't implement anything, 
in this it will it looks the syntax error, right? Uh, you can't even run anything. It's, it's gonna be a syntax error, right? Um because in the other one, right? Okay, so if it will be a syntax error. Um, you see, you're getting a syntax error because your Python is wrong, right? So normally what people will do when they want they don't want to implement something yet, they just put pass. Which means that if I run this, right, you won't get a syntax error. You just it will just say that the test itself is failing. But it's, it won't be a syntax error. This is a syntax error that you're getting because the structure of your uh, function is wrong. Because you have a function, there's no content. Uh, yeah. So that's just uh, me trying to say, you know, I want to test the negative, right? So if you wanna, if you're making tests, you wanna test the positive and you wanna test the negative, right? right. Um, we have about 20 minutes. Uh, so I think we need to move to the next section. Um, yes, exactly, uh, Michael. So system exit is like an error not on the test itself, uh, on the function. So basically what they're saying here is that uh, you, you, you've written code uh, and you want to test that your code, uh, it's like a, it's like a try catch. Uh, you just think of it like that. You've written code and you wanna make sure that it throws the right error when you get the, uh, the right, um, uh, yeah, when it, it gives you the right error message when you get an error. So that's what it is. So that's what they're doing. And this is, um, it has actually, this is, has nothing to do with, with PyTest per se. It's just an example, right? It's just an example. This you can use in just, you know, everyday uh, Python code, right? Uh, you could raise uh, anything. So I think you could probably, let's see, probably raise exception. Let's see. But, a test right? and it'll say that uh, yeah you've raised an exception and it's not a it's not a system it expects the system exits but it's getting an exception right? that's just to test your code uh, whatever the implementation is so regardless of that right uh, so um, so for this for this part it's just use the actual uh, PyTest documentation, it's really explanatory, uh, it's actually really good. Um, but for the next part, we do have uh, the PyTest documentation. Um, just so that we get, to, we get to touch on this as well. Um, I know there's still a lot of questions about, about PyTest, uh, but we can, we can look at them later. So what you want to do, so you have, I'm going to send you the link here. So you go to this GitHub uh, directory <coughs> and you clone uh, this PyTel course, right? Uh, so I would say, uh, okay. uh, so, okay, I'll do this. Okay, let's just look. So I would say uh, to have this, right? If you go to uh, code, SSH, click on this uh, copy, copy the link, uh, you, you clone that, right? So normally when you do git clone and you don't give it a name, right? It will use this name, right? For your, for your uh, repo. Right, but what, what I want you to do is just, you know, say project at the end. Then what I will do is we rename this, uh, you know, this uh, the, the, the direction name to project. Because uh, I want to use the project name, right? Then you'll be turning into project. Okay, the list here, we've got project here. The other thing is, besides that, um, it's you need the sandbox. Um, and how did I find the sandbox? Okay. So I think it was sandbox. Okay. Let's see. 
Don't cut the algorithms. Send box there. Okay. I think this uh, many of you should already have. Okay, paste it here. Right, this uh, you should already have from the previous class uh, with Cosimo. Uh, so, so you also just need to clone this if you don't have it. Right, uh, it's a quick clone, so I can just do it again. Clone, so we can just keep the name a sandbox there. Cool. Uh, so now we have project and we have sandbox, right? Project sandbox, and maybe I've put them in a you know directory called algorithm. So there they are, right? Cool. And this is what we're seeing here. So what we're seeing. Here. I've got algorithm, the project, and sandbox. So I'm gonna delete this because I don't need them. So I already have them here inside algorithm this project in the sandbox right so basically um you know let's talk about python a little bit uh, so they're saying it's a python language binding for algorand smart contracts right uh, you guys probably know more about this than me um about you know algorand smart contracts right which are small programs that set various functions on the blockchain and operate on layer one, right? Uh, so yeah, so basically it's, it's just a language um, that you can use uh, to, you know, to play around, to do different things, right? Uh, with the smart contracts uh, for algorithm, right? Um, and here they're saying that it is a, it's a new language called Transaction execution approval uh, language till right. So the, the till is for, uh, but they did say it's an assembly language, right? It's an assembly language, uh, which we'll see what that actually means, right? Um, so it basically, I think uh, the way I understand it is that it will take you. Okay, so for now. We'll pause with the PyTest. So that's our sandbox, and that's our um, project, which is the uh, Python course. So if I go into contract here, counter, step one, for example. All right. So this, what you see here, in you know, in this function def approval, in your def clear. Um, this, this is what uh, you know, till code looks like, right? It it looks it is Python code, but there are a lot of, uh, from the Python library, there's a lot of, you know, uh, classes and and you know uh, functions that have been uh, predefined that do various things in there, right? Uh, but this is how you manipulate your your smart contracts with the Python uh, programming language, right? Um, yeah, so that's what that's what it's about. Uh, that's what it really does. Um, yeah, so is it being security audited? Use at your own risk, right? This is this theme there. But anyway, so we need we need this. We need the the sandbox, and you also need uh, this uh, project, right? Which is the title uh, uh, course, right? As, as I've shown here, here. So there's the sandbox and that's the Python course. Uh, please let me know if, if you've got that clone. Is this the folder structure we use for the challenge? I uh, know <laughs> this is only the folder structure that I'm using uh, to demonstrate. Uh, it is, yeah. It's it has nothing to do with the with the challenge. It's just for you to learn the the technologies. You can, yeah. You can probably use your own folder structure. What makes sense for you, or if there's guidance in the challenge, you can you can use the, the guidance from the challenge. But this has nothing to do with uh, with the folder structure of the challenge. This is just to demonstrate. All right. 
Uh, so here, right, so once you've cloned your, you know, uh, PyTel course and renamed it to project, uh, you'll see here, and here as well, if, if you can, uh, you know, follow along. Um, so maybe before we do this, um, uh, where did I find this, uh, you know, Python course, right? Uh, I found it here. Right? So this, so this is, uh, this is the course. Oh, it's a very good one. You can go through it. Uh, <clears throat> and this is what I'm trying to <clears throat> to demo here. It's very similar to to what is being shown here, which is the same. <laughs> the is, you know, it's the same uh, with perhaps my own understanding of of state. So this is the course. It's, it's quite good. Um, it's in two parts, right? So the first part would be just, you know, PyTel, uh, working with uh, simple contracts. And then there's a more advanced uh, part of it, which is the, you know, it's a particular application that uh, they're demonstrating, uh, which is a bit complicated than the simple contract where they're using uh, rock, paper, scissors. So I deploy you to, you know, once you've understood how uh, working with a simple contract works, then uh, you can do the rock, paper, scissors. But what we're going to demonstrate today is basically from uh, tutorial one up until seven here. Right, just add this as well so I can find it easier. Okay, so that's the YouTube uh, tutorial <coughs> that accompanies uh, this uh, you know piece of code. Right, cool. Um, so I think um, you guys. Um, so here. I think you guys, we, you had a meeting with uh, Abby, with, with Abby about your issues with the sandbox. Um, can you guys tell me in the chat, Bob, in the in the chat, uh, that whether you got those issues sorted out? Are you, is everyone's sandbox working properly? Because we do need it for this. Okay, Samuel's uh, sandbox is not working, and Michael as well, it's not working. Okay. Okay, so a lot of people still have issues with the sandbox. Uh, I think the, the biggest issue is, you know, people are using different operating systems. Uh, with me, uh, because I'm using Ubuntu, uh, you know, my sandbox seems to just work fine. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So you probably won't be able to follow um, if you don't have a, sand, a working sandbox. Okay, Rafa's sandbox is working. That's great. Uh, but I'll just, you know, demonstrate anyway um, here. So basically, according to, to this uh, tutorial, just get a better view here. So there's so you, you need um, to set this up, set the this project up. You need to have Docker desktop uh, installed if you are on a Windows environment, uh, and then you need uh, to have your algorithm sandbox, which uh, we've just uh, downloaded here, right? So just downloaded here. Um, yeah, actually I did. So let's just see. I did try install it. On, on my Mesh, because you can actually get a Docker desktop on your on your Ubuntu, but it does slow down my machine quite a bit, so I had to shut it down. Right, uh, but you know if you're using uh, Windows, then you know you may want to to use this. Right, you sign in, etc., and it will connect uh, you to to Docker. But anyway, let's leave that because it slows down my machine. So I'm just going to use Docker as installed on my on my uh, Ubuntu environment uh, via the terminal. So okay. So once you have your Docker desktop or your normal Docker for uh, the Linux guys, you need the sandbox, right? Which is what we have here. Just the sandbox. 
Uh, and then now there's a small change that you need to make, which is this uh, volumes type bind. So basically what this does is actually connect your project, right, all the code uh, from your project and it loads it into your sandbox, right? That's what volumes is. So you're making this project a volume within your sandbox, right? So it's like you're, it's almost like you're copying the directory so that you have access to it within the, uh, within the sandbox, right? Um, and where is that? Okay, so you go to your sandbox, then you open Docker Composer, I think I already have it here, and you add this, right? That's all. So the way your, your Docker Compose file is, you change nothing else, you just need to change this, right? And this will bind, right? So here, this is, you know, because they're on the same level. So you go out one level to find the project or whatever you've named it. And within your, uh, within your, uh, your sandbox, which is a, a, a Docker container, uh, you have, uh, it will create, you, probably you don't have this already, but it will create this uh, data directory and put all the code, all the contents of your project inside there, right? So you, once you do that, um, there's still a few things to set up. Uh, so we are going to be working on, so this is sandbox and on the project, right? So we're going to be, you know, switching between the project and the, the sandbox itself, right? So if I say Docker images, okay. So I have a, a bunch of things here, right? I have a bunch of things, but you see, I have sandbox indexer, sandbox algod, um, and, and that's probably it uh, to do with the sandbox. Um, I think there's anything else. Let's see. Actually, the, the compose file can tell us. So how many services do we have with algo? Algo D, we've got indexer, or we've got indexer DB. I don't know, I don't see it here. So indexer should be indexer DB somewhere. Uh, I don't see it, but it's probably there somewhere, right? Uh, okay, cool. So first, before we, we connect the sandbox, we need to do a little bit of setup on, on the project itself. Uh, you will see that, okay, for me, uh, in this, so we can do it together. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, I don't know how that's gonna work since I've only deleted it. Let's see, we do, so let's deactivate. It's not there, I'm just gonna open it again. It's gone, it's a project. Okay, cool, so we don't have it, right? But you see that you have a requirements file here, right? Uh, and you have a readme, right, which is, this one, it's not, it's this one, right? So you have the read me. So it does show you what steps you need to do, um, right? So after you know making this change in your Docker Compose, which is here, you do a sandbox up, okay? So you so in here, there's our sandbox, executable, sandbox, up, um, CV, so we can see what's happening in there, right? Gives us all the details, so this for both both, and we get an error. The compose file is invalid because services are good volumes contains an invalid type, it should be a string. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what that's about uh, because you see here, this is what we have. Um, 
this on the same level and there's really no strings here i'm not sure i think this error is probably not it's okay let's see so algo d dot volumes contains invalid type bind it's complaining about this bind um, which it shouldn't complain about because if you look here okay so there won't be any sound yeah so if you look here you see it's volumes type bind source project target data right and nothing else has been changed and so yeah so the only thing i did here was say minus v okay still i'm getting the same same error um so maybe okay let's try this Scrubbing this out Okay, it seems to be working. So something about this that it doesn't like. Uh, build ports. Yeah, I'm really not sure. Um, let's see. Yes, yeah, so it's should it directly under. Yeah, so I don't know what the error is about there. Um, okay, if you're building your own. Okay, but anyway, so let's see. We, we can come back to that. But you can see if we don't make this change, right? We'll come back. We'll, we'll, we'll need this because otherwise. Um, so let's see i really don't want to debug <laughs> um debugging yeah but yeah let's let's not debug uh, we don't have time but anyway so you'll see that um it will tell you so if we remove this right we're not so we won't see the, this project within um, within our sandbox, but that's fine. We'll fix that later. Uh, you'll see that it tells us everything about you know what's happening. The algo division, the indexer, your the, the, uh, Postgres database, <coughs> right? And then your uh, Google Notes data, right? It tells you you have a, an account list, the three accounts here, etc., right? And you can actually send, there's an example of sending money between two accounts. And as soon after sending, can I hide this? Perfect. Soon after sending the transaction will appear in Indexer if we do that, right? You can just do it quickly. It's in, oh yeah, because I uncommented this. So that again. Okay, so you're just sending uh, some micro algos from one account to another. Remember, we have three accounts here, and they're all online. Um, and, I, and I think these are the balances that you get there. Okay. Um, you know, yeah, <clears throat> so that's just to say that, um, and then you can test it. That's just to say that, you know, our sandbox is working fine, right? Uh, and you can even, you know, view your transactions using Cal like this. All right. So that's that's the output that you get. All right. So seems seems to be fine there. All right. Except we do we won't have this inside of the sandbox which you actually need. But anyway, uh, to set up the project itself, right? Uh, we've done that, we need to create this uh, virtual environment. Right. Uh, so here, what I'm, I'm 
I don't think this matters much. Uh, this is just my Anaconda virtual environment, which is uh, being used by the sandbox. But for the project, you see, I don't have any environment yet. Right? And I did say that we have the requirements file, which we need the requirements file. It's got a bunch of things that uh, are being installed there. Uh, but the most important thing is Okay, it's so the Python algorithm SDK, right? Which allows you to communicate uh, with algorithms uh, via, you know, via Python, right? So this is, yeah, <clears throat> uh, this is like the API that you use to write uh, algorithm uh, you know, code in Python, and you have PyTill here, right? And like for us, they also have PyTest, but we already had it in our, on the content environment, but they do have it. Uh, because they're using it uh, for, for their test as well. Right? But the most important thing is the PyTill and the SDK, which is, now I've lost it, this one, right? So the most important things, and I think the others are like dependencies, etc. So you create that, so you can just do that. Uh, no module named, okay. So I think it's in Conda. Okay, okay it's in Conda. Tab is in Conda. So virtual n vn is installed in Conda. So that's why I need to activate this. Uh, let's see. So in comments here. I feel I have a fair history of automatic requirement generating. Yes, that's, that's correct, Michael. There's no volume content. Yes, uh, this is what you need to add, right? Remember, uh, this, this is what we're trying to add. So there's no volume, but you need to add it. I'm not sure if it will fail for you as it failed for me, uh, right? So it's probably giving me a wrong error anyway. Uh, so that's what you need to do. So you need to add this yourself. It, it doesn't come um, with that. I think what we could do as well. Okay, so here we're using Vim. So say for it. Okay, so Docker file, so put it there. And then we do up again. Uh, expand block end. Oh, okay. Yeah, because it's on a different level, right? Okay. It's on a different level. Uh, so, right. Yeah, so still complaining about the string. Not sure about that. I'll have to look at it. Um, yeah, so, but I'm saying that this you need to end uh, yourself. So it's probably it's probably giving me the wrong error, right? As you can see, like I'll show you here, it's the same content that I have. The same content that I have. So it's giving me, yeah, source targets, everything is the same. It's giving me the wrong error. So I need to look into that. Anyway, so yeah, so um, for that, right, you create your, so if you see, you've got your virtual environment uh, here. So let me just wrap up quickly, so out of time. But you've got a virtual environment there, uh, see what's in there, you know, and then you need to activate it, right? You need to activate it, yeah. It's activated. You will see that there's both environments. I think this will the VN will take precedence. So if there's something in VN, uh, you know the code will use that. If it doesn't find it, we will use uh, the base environment. Okay. So with that activated, that's fine. Uh, you can actually also do it uh, from here, uh, but that's a yeah an an another way of doing it. But you have that, now it's activated. Now you just run, install, 
performance uh, requirements. Right? So remember, we don't have we don't have Python installed, and we don't have the algorithm SDK installed. So this will install those into your virtual environment here. Okay? Cool. So that's that's it. We've got that installed. I repeat phrase. You see, all of those have been installed. So we're good. All right. Cool. Um, so the other thing, so what you need to do, right? Uh, so let's just say uh, it's important. So you've got your contracts here, right? I think this is a different one. It's a different one as well, different example. There's a counter example here, which is a very simple one. Um, yeah, I probably won't be able to go into, this is very Python specific code, but you see that, you know, they have types like bytes, uh, they've got, you know, like global, global owner is a global variable, global counter, right? So that, you know, whatever whatever is happening, so, you, you know, you can only have one owner in your whole system. If you have local instead of global, local, if you've got local instead of global, then it means that, you know, you can have multiple uh, different uh, local owners for different um, executions, right? But global, you can only have one, right? That's fine. And then you've got this bytes, uh, this byte slice, uh, count will be, you know, an et cetera, et cetera, right? Uh, but yeah, uh, these are the different things that you can define. Um, but the most important thing, so you've got, you've got two functions, right? You've got the approval, in the clear, uh, which you know, there's there's not much that is happening there. It just approves, I guess. It clears you. Um, this is a sort of a test environment. It clears your transactions and whatever else you you were executing there. Uh, yeah, but the the main important thing is that you've got you know a return, and within your return program, when there's an event, you define all all those types of things. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'm not sure how to explain there, but you know, everything that you see here is just you know extracted out of this environment, out of this return, right? So, global owner, global account that's being used there, but they've defined it here, right? Uh, to make it easy to find, op increment, op decrement as well. They're there, they're there, increment and decrement. They are there, they are there, right? So the most important part of this code is this, and everything else is to support what's happening here when there's a when there's an approval uh, sort of request that you get, right? And here, when this is clear, you just approve. You don't do anything. Uh, but I'm sure you could, you know, make it uh, to suit whatever whatever you need using uh, the Python API, right? It is quite broad. Um, Go into overview, right? So there's different examples, you know, bank for account, and you know, this is uh, an example of a function that you can define uh, with with Python and all the different things that you can do. So it's it's quite, um, I'd, I'd say it's it's quite broad. There's a lot of things that you could do uh, to your smart contracts uh, using using this language. Uh, yeah, it just takes a lot of, you know, yeah, playing around with it, uh, trying out different things, trying out different examples. Uh, but uh, what I will say is that, say, so there's this piece of code here, this build.sh, right? Uh, so when you're, you're done making changes here, in your step zero or step two or whatever, right? You can build, right? So when you build, You'll create a build directory and it will remove a build directory which, <clears throat> if it already exists. Uh, so this is, you know, bash uh, script. And then, you know, if there's an error, it will, it will exit. But if there isn't, then it will build uh, these things, right? So let's see what we can do there. Uh, I think it's a very, it's a very long uh, command, which I think they've not provided here. 
No, I'm not. Um, but it's something like build, and then we say contracts dot. Uh, let's just see what's in there. So dot counter dot step zero one. Okay. Uh, permission denied. That is weird. We don't need with this. We should not need that. Right, but anyway, um, I'll, I'll look up the, the command uh, and show you. Uh, basically, what you do is you build, you need to build this, right? So you use this build uh, script and it will build whatever, um, you know, uh, activity you've created with, with PyTill. Uh, which is which is defined here. Uh, let me see if I can find this command here. Okay. Uh, let's, check. let's check it here. So quite a, a long command. I, sh I should have copied it. Um, so if you can find it quickly. Okay, so that's, you know, defining uh, all the code which you see we already have here, right? So that's fine. But I just want to, okay. Build, so, okay, so this is fine. So it should work, right? You see? Code is the same as what I did, so it's probably because it's not connected to to this, right? Um, that's why. That's probably why, because it's it's, it's probably communicating needs to communicate with the sandbox for that to execute. I suspect. Uh, yeah, but uh, let's play around with this, guys, and yeah, and yeah, use this. It's, it's quite good and use this uh, <clears throat> environment that's being created here. Uh, when I do figure out why, uh, why this is failing, right? Uh, when we make this change here, is it? When we make this change here, this, then, then I'll share. But once, once you have that, then you sandbox and your project are connected and you can run all types of, uh, of code in Python. Uh, are there any questions before we wrap this up? Because okay, sandbox works. So yeah, if your sandbox works, uh, try uh, try making this change and then running it again. Uh, given that you've renamed the project, uh, you've renamed PyTill cost to project, uh, or you can just use whatever, right? And see if you can, if you can, uh, if you can run, then your, your sandbox and your project are connected. And yeah, you can execute things here. And when you go into your sandbox, uh, you'll be able to see what's going on there, right? Uh, let me see if I can show you quickly how to get into the sandbox. Okay, it's not there. Oh yeah, actually, uh, okay, so this is where it is. Let's see. Okay, cool. So basically, what you need to do. Uh, okay, so that's what you need to do. So let's say we we'll just assume that you know the volume is linked. So we do sandbox enter. Okay, say so I think I'll go D. I think that's it. Okay. 
Yeah, okay, so we still have an error here. Let's just remove it. Okay, so you see, this will get you into, into your sandbox. Um, so ideally, uh, so there's a lot of bunch of information. Ideally, if you list data, right, we don't have it because this failed. But what would happen is that within data, you would find all of this, right? So what should happen is that when you run the build, you run this build script, what will happen is that within uh, your, I think within your project, right here, there will be a new build directory, right? And then you have two files there. You will have this file, um, approval, uh, you expect to have this approval till actually there's a quicker way of doing this right uh, so okay so what you expect to get is in here you get approval dot till there's nothing and clear dot till right as they are saying here here uh, as they're saying here that it's a, an assembly language, right? What it looks like, um, see if I can show you quickly. It, it actually shows you everything that happens, right? Uh, show you everything that happens. I don't know, okay, I need to find the sample. But it's like, I'm not sure if, you know, guys, if you know assembly code, but it's like very detailed, right? It will say, uh, for example, here. Uh, so, okay. So in your return, right? So there's a return here. It will say something like int zero. So there's int zero and int one. Right? This is, is a fail. And this is a success, right? So when you look at all these different parts of your program, right? Uh, global put, global put, uh, and global get, it will it will show whether it succeeded or not, right? And not everything will execute, right? But there's certain things that based on what you've defined will execute, and yeah, and then you'll see it when you open these two files. You'll see, you know. Um, what actually happened there. So it's a very detailed assembly type of, of, of uh, output that you get. And that's how you know exactly what's happening with your smart contract. So that's that's the under the hood, what's what's happening uh, with with this code that you've, uh, you would have created here, right? And this is really up to you how you define it. Uh, but it's, it's, it's yeah. I'd say maybe for now we can stop there unless there are questions. Um, yeah, but I, I, I hope uh, it's, a, it's, it's a good start for you guys to play around with it. Um, yeah, I apologize I couldn't demonstrate everything uh, because of that failure. Uh, Bureau is saying you build is successful. If you didn't do it with, uh, you need to uh, make changes here. You need to make this change. I'm not sure if there's something in my environment that makes this thing fail. Uh, but if you can try in your environment to run this uh, and it passes, then you should be able to follow all the rest of, of the steps, right? Uh, so, which is here. But if that succeeds and you, this succeeds as well, then you can just follow the video. Uh, this video is here with the different uh, parts. Unfortunately, uh, it, it's not here. Uh, yeah, unfortunately in this repo, uh, this, the readme really, it doesn't go far enough. It just goes up until then. And there's, there's no, it doesn't show you uh, step by step how to do this and how to do this. It only shows you in that video how to do the rest of it, unfortunately. Okay. Uh, I hope that helps. Um, let's catch up on Slack. Uh, yeah.
Um, yeah, I don't see any other question. Yeah, so Burek, I hope you got that. Yeah. Okay. Cheers, guys.